The Mavs announcing Kyrie Irving undergoing surgery for a broken hand. What do you think of where this uh, goes? Is, is it clear if he's going to be back or not? Uh, well, Chuck, what do you have for us on this uh, Kyrie Irving story? Yeah, so we had uh, Mike Curtis, who's really doing a fantastic job covering the Mavs for the morning news. He was the first that I saw uh, put out that he underwent surgery to repair a broken hand. He sustained that earlier this month while training. So I don't know. I mean, when it comes to him being back for camp, I feel like that's something that should be okay. He's got, what, till October? to go ahead and let that thing heal, but there isn't, I did not see any estimated time frame, really. Uh, but I guess when it comes to broken hands, like, what is that? You're looking at a month to two months for that thing to go ahead and hopefully recover? Yeah, I mean, I think you're talking about at least eight weeks. So that would put him pretty much right at about training camp time. September 27th, I believe, is when things really get going across yeah. the league. So. Uh, it's it his non-shooting hand. Non-shooting hand, absolutely, which is uh, which is which is nice, but it certainly sucks. It does, uh, and I'm sure it will ultimately slow slow play what he does throughout training camp. But I was bummed when I got the news uh, on the uh, the notification on the phone yesterday. I was like, "Geez, what are you doing? How yeah. are you breaking your hand right now?" I'm trying to figure out what he was doing. I mean, crazy stuff can happen. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, maybe he was working on his left-handed windmill dunk. Hit the rim a little too hard. I'll tell you what. I mean, <laughs> he did just have, didn't he just set a career high for most dunks in a season? He did. He might understand about, like, his time here with the Mavericks and the role. Like, he's going to get opportunities yeah. to slam at home, and he wants to make sure that he's flushing it like a big dunk. Modern medicine. Maybe the, maybe the hand's stronger. I, I just hope there's no complications to it, you know, and he's, he's back uh, maybe shortly before training camp. I don't think you have much to worry about Kyrie Irving, like, a, as far as this being a distraction. He's one of the hardest workers on his craft that I've ever seen in, in any professional sport. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think that's a reminder that, hey, Kyrie Irving's career has not been – uh, without injury uh, and you know last year was a blessing keeping him and Luca healthy is your absolute ticket but what did you think of the way the finals went for Kyrie if we zoomed out from this injury and just looked at the balance of you know how things have gone for him the last couple of months didn't appear to be what he was up to that point w why was that and and what does that mean you know is is he getting to a point where you have to wonder, is age going to prevent him from being a difference maker against, you know, elite teams like they eventually came up with the Celtics or an elite scheme like the Thunder had for him? I think certain defenders, like I think we saw Oklahoma City with their size and physicality, uh, he certainly was a shell of himself in that series. Now, he was banged up in that series as well. Uh, but Boston, I wonder, and I didn't really think, like I, I didn't want to buy into the mentality thing there with like maybe psychologically the effect of the Boston crowd like that did have an impact on him but maybe it did because he played much better at home in games three and four than he did in the three games in Boston so I do think there's something there at age 32 where there will be certain defensive matchups that are going to cause him problems now at this age especially being a smaller guard to where he was probably able with his athleticism to, you know, limit that a little bit when he was younger. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think that he's still going to be a difference maker. But when you're going up against a team in Boston, one through five, all of them could defend. He certainly was challenged in a way that no other team was going to provide that challenge to him. Yeah, and it's still with the all the all the stuff underlying with Boston as well, like how much of that was affecting yeah. him there because even in the Oklahoma City series it felt like his scoring was down but his assists were up in a big way and it felt like there were a lot of things that were benefiting from the Oklahoma City Thunder choosing to mm -hmm. take him away and it wasn't like he completely vanished because again the assists were up quite a bit so it's really only that Celtics series that's a bummer in my mind of like well, he just really wasn't himself and he didn't impact the series the way you would have wanted him to and I think a lot of that just has to do with whatever it is he has to deal with psychologically about Boston and yeah. the fact that they're awesome for sure, as you yeah. mentioned. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. You know, may, maybe it was just specifically scheme against OKC. I mean, they were pretty much insta doubling him in all scenarios and, you know, betting that Dort and, you know, Luca's injuries would slow him down enough and a perfectly good strategy. How about this? If Clay Thompson can't defend well, is that really a good idea to have him, Luca, and Kyrie in the starting lineup? I, I think that might be the the most interesting thing to pay attention to in the first month of the season. Ooh, I mean, I think if that ends up being the case, you're going to have to start Najee Marshall, and Clay is going to have to understand that for the betterment of the team, which he seems open to because he wants to get that championship. 
maybe I do need to come off the bench like he did in the second half against Golden State. That might be a big reason why he signed with the Mavs outside of, of course, he wants to win a championship because he wants to start. And that's probably why Derek Jones Jr. left. But I think that we've seen there are times where with Luka and Kyrie, who aren't all-world defenders, they will put effort in at times, especially Kyrie, but that's going to be a problem. If you've got three guys on the floor that are really limited with their defensive ability, you're going to have to, at times, put out Najee Marshall to start like they ended up doing with Derrick Jones Jr. as the season went along. I kind of feel like they made the determination that even playing defense wasn't good enough. The scoring was more important than the defense. I think they're going to live with this. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. they're going to say, listen, you know, we we the second half of the season, we played some... Some pretty good defense through the playoffs. Played some pretty good defense, but we couldn't score enough. You know, we couldn't we couldn't put pressure enough pressure on our opponents in some of these games. I think they've made a fundamental switch to like you know, fine if we have three bad defenders out there, at least we got three badass shooters. That's how I think they're looking at this. Yeah, I think the offense is everything that you're that you're looking for here. I'd be. I think it's more important to them than actually playing the defense. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it clearly is. That was their biggest thing. They were willing to sacrifice yeah. that within, I guess, the starting lineup. They're making the choice. We are willing to get at least a little bit worse defensively. Now we'll see how much worse. I yeah. would I would still probably be surprised if Clay Thompson's defense is so bad that it outweighs what he's able to provide offensively. But I yeah. think there are scenarios where you could see that happening. Uh, but I don't think that that is... Uh, I don't think that's going to be a huge problem, at least not in year one. As, he, as it as it goes on, you know, as he ages for sure. Right. I think this year they will be able to hold on enough, and hopefully he, his his efficiencies from the three point line are so much that it just outweighs whatever is bad going on defense. I mean, Najee Marshall made a big bump in his three point percentage last mm-hmm. year. If he's capable of stopping the other team's best player or matching up with the other team's best player and giving him hell. And Grimes isn't too far away from there in that right. department either. They, you they, have they multiple added options. two good defenders. Yeah. I don't think yeah. they really said. But like, when do we're you need the best defenders? Is that in the reserve minutes, or is it you know when the game is starting and their two best perimeter players are on the court? You know that that's what I'm looking at. If Marshall or Grimes can shoot the ball well mm. next year, I think that's going to become a significant factor as you're looking at those 30 point first quarters for the other team. They're going to make it look awful easy, and I think it really made a huge difference last year when you had an elite guy like Derek Jones Jr. who could help slow the other team down. I, I think the thing too that they're probably thinking a big bump defensively with Lively. Yeah, no doubt. I, I think that, that, I think they're probably thinking, okay, with the guys we've added, and then a year more seasoning with Lively, that maybe that we can get away with having three poor defenders. And in the regular season, that might be enough with PJ Washington taking yeah. on you know the All Star and and Lively protecting him. Yeah. It'll be really interesting to see how the regular season goes because now we have two out of the last three postseasons where they didn't have a great regular season, but the matchups that were were able to be dictated by Luca. Um, you know, allowed them to put other teams in checkmate over the course of seven games. So as you get into next year, I wonder if they're fifth, sixth, seventh around the all-star break, if we're going to take it all in and say, hey, we're going to be just fine. Just be patient until the playoffs start, and we're going to give them hell here with, uh, you know, matchup nightmares. Yeah, I mean, I do think that's that's sort of the benefit of the doubt that they have afforded for themselves. So I think there will be some of that. And then it goes the opposite with other teams. When you're perpetually not showing up when it matters, then it's hard to get up when, you know, when, when you're high in the regular season or whatever. But for the Mavericks, I think they've I think they've earned that. And if Najee Marshall is able to come anywhere close to being the same effectiveness with his three-point shooting and whatnot, you know, offensively for the Mavericks as Clay Thompson, then yes, there's no question that'll end up being a better guy to throw out there because defensively, he's certainly going yeah. to be much better. Yeah, yeah, and I, I know I know how much this coaching staff obsesses over defense. It's yeah, uh, definitely right. a story Agreed. to watch, and you know, it's not like Clay Thompson's the worst defender of the world. Uh, no, but and it might just be semantics. I mean, Jason Kidd will mix and match those lineups throughout the entire regular season. We know that, and that sometimes will drive you mad. <laughs> 